Greetings all. You have heard on other videos me say that wherever there are tanks, eventually if you hang out long enough, Sophie Line is going to show up. Well, we are now in Central Texas, College Station, Museum of the American GI, and guess who showed up? Yep. Yeah. What is it with you and that? What, what? Okay, first question. Are you a YouTuber, a streamer, or something else? How do you yes. categorize yourself? Yeah, I, th I think content creator kind of Overall covers content everything. creation. Yeah. If I can get a good connection, I'll live stream an event, you know, otherwise it's recorded for the folks that couldn't come along and I think anything that comes under content creator fits with that. And did you start with tanks or did you start with some, some other game or idea and then move on? I actually started with, with World of Tanks. My friend sort of dared me not to. He's like, you would never do something like that. And I was like, the fuck I would not. Um, so in response to him telling me that I couldn't or wouldn't, then I absolutely did. So we actually started out streaming World of Tanks as like a joke. It was with irony and I set up all my profile is sort of a parody of um, internet streamer culture, sort of. And then it took off, which was very surprising. So the joke is on me. And, um, <laughs> you know, seven years and a couple sponsorships later, and um, a whole bunch of people who both love games and love tanks. It's been an adventure. So I get to go across the world recording tanks and tank events and tank folk. And it's been it's been tremendous. So you, you've been to most of the museum now. You've been to Bobbington, you've been to AHM, you've been to France, I believe. Some I haven't more. been you to Zamir, haven't been to Kubinka. There's a few, that's a few that I'm still missing. What's, what's for next on your list? So once COVID lifts and we're actually able to travel again, where are you going to go next? Oh, geez. I'd really like to see the carousel event at Saumur. Obviously to Kubinka to see the mouse mm -hmm. and Object 704. This would be fantastic. They, they being of the thick type of tank. Of the tank. thick variety of tank. Yes. My, my special So tank. why tank? I mean, of all the games or all the things that you could take an interest in, I mean, you've gone beyond just taking a dare. You take a personal <laughs> interest in armored vehicles. Yeah, I mean, I've liked military history my entire life. And like ever since I was like a little kid, I was eight years old and we went to a living history event with my school and they had um, like a merch table with some stuff and they had a little die cast Panzer IV. I had to have it. Have I spent my, my lunch money for the week on it. Um, and I wanted the bigger one, but I didn't have enough. Uh, and I've had it, I still have it. So ever, since I was a little kid, I was into airplanes first when I was very little, but so growing up and then of course um, there was movies, there was film, uh, games, and then of course there was video games. So when I was in school, I played a lot of other games, sort of a social gamer. So my friend was like, you should try World of Tanks. And I'd see some ads for it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, okay. And then I was hooked. So I was super addicted the first like probably eight months and then I started streaming and it kind of went from there and then meeting some of my community. Um, I'd been to take museums before. I'd been to the one out in AAF in Danville mm -hmm. before I played World of Tanks. Yep. Um, but my community was like, oh, there's this thing called Tank Fest. And I was like, what? Tank Fest? Is this heaven? You know, so <laughs> I raised the money and flew out to England and it blew my mind. And that was the first time because I haven't served. Yeah. So I, I'd never seen a, a, an armored vehicle in motion. And that was like, you know, you can see it in film, you can read it in books it's and not stuff. The same. It's not the it's same. It's not the same. The sound, the feel, the mass, the sheer mass of it. And I think it's really important for people who are interested in history and who dig tanks to go out and see the real thing in motion. It makes it so much more real. They, they do. The first time I saw an IS-3 actually moving, you realize why the Allies were so scared. Oh, I mean, I've seen God. IS-3s in a museum before, just sitting static. And they go, oh, okay, it's well armored, it looks mean and see. But to see it actually just trundling in your direction, totally it's different. It's low, it's wide, it's mean. The gun on that thing, the IS-3, was, that was one of my favorite tank fest years to see the one they, that brought the one from the Belgium. One from Belgium, yeah. yeah. It's like it's events like that. I've been to the last tank fest since 2015. That's true, you went to Bellatrax. I yeah. haven't been to Bellatrax. And to Bellatrax as well is awesome. Yeah, so um, getting out to these museums and stuff is really important. So I figured like, you know, as part of my channel, um, people are interested in that as well. And not everybody can go to those events. No. But you can bring them with you if you do some good recordings or you do some streams. And so it finds, I find out that the museum side is also very appreciative of this because it's, it's also promotion. It is. It's sharing what they do because they're very good. You know, people like yourself who are knowledgeable, like tanks, that's what you do. You know, these people run museums or they, they run tanks, they restore tanks, that's what they do. They don't necessarily mess around on social media. And they don't, they don't take the time to record, you know, themselves working on it. That's not like their no, area, but yeah. there's plenty of people who will share it and they love that. And so, so does the community and then they're inspired to go as well. So how much of this has been on the job training for you with regard to tanks versus with regard to video editing, recording equipment? I mean, I've, I've had to learn everything on microphones, yep. to video editing. Same, same. So you kind of learn as you go along and, you know, I ain't made a money. So my camera is not the best, but it's upgraded from like an iPhone 7, you know, and then, yeah. um, up to like Sony AX53, it's quite nice. Someday, maybe the big one, who knows? No, I mean, that, that's <laughs> whenever I get some with Patreon money. It's a case of thank you patrons. Yep. I just bought a new 4K camera or a teleprompter for, for the lectures that I do, things like that. Yeah, you learn as you go. YouTube tutorials on how to edit. Like, how can I best showcase this event? Like, how can I get people inspired to come here and see it for themselves? 
and uh, to be able to do something like that. If you were going to buy a military vehicle for your home garage, what would it oh, be? Oh man, okay, so... Thinking realistically, I mean, right. everybody wants a Sherman tank, but I'm going to go for like a scout car. This question is so difficult. Um, I like tanks, I love tanks. Hmm. However, I love half-tracks. Oh, so like That's the M3? No, SDK of Z9. Ooh. This FAMO, this what, is what, what I want. What the twin? The 18 ton. Okay. <sighs> I love this one. Oh, and I got to see one for the first time at Militrax. Oh my gosh, it was awesome. You it's, not, it's not a small vehicle. I mean, no, it's you, massive. You, you can put your entire family in there. And yeah, stuff. and y'all friends. It's massive. It's massive. I love it. Maintenance is going to be a bear, though, because you've got to lubricate each and every individual track. It's link. an armored vehicle. Maintenance is going to be a bear on anything. Well, it's relative. I'm sorry. You were talking with Ken it's earlier. Relative. Did, did we, was he telling you how much trouble he's had with the tracks in that on toss? He hadn't mentioned that. No. Ask him. I will. Because he will say very good things about his ONTOS and his lack of maintenance requirements. And see, that's the kind of cool thing that you can see at these, these events. You know, I'm like, oh, there's a running ONTOS. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. I go and there's this guy and his, he's got a smile like brighter than the sun. And it turns out it's a, it's a veteran. It's an ONTOS veteran who came just showing up for an event and yep. they let him take a ride. And I think that's magical. And not just a veteran. I mean, he's a combat vet. He actually Absolutely. took his ONTOS to Vietnam. That's right. He's a Marine. Like, he, he did it. The last time he touched that thing was in, what, 1967. And so it surprised him. You could just see the, the joy. Okay, so you say you haven't served. Now, the Texas Guard has just announced that it's getting a heavy battalion, including tanks and Bradleys. And females are now authorized to be tankers in That's the U.S. Right. Army. I may know a recruiter to help you out. Are you interested? I don't think I would pass. I, I, uh, I, okay, this is another unfunny story. I jumped off a cliff in uh, 2013 and I messed okay. up my spine. Oh, yeah, the Army might take you. Yeah, I don't think they're so interested in me, but... For, um, for the younger men and women who are interested, I think um, they should absolutely look into it for themselves. I know there's a lot of people from the history scene and as well from the video game scene who've been inspired to serve through what they've learned through the games in the community. So. Yeah. And even events like this. I mean, oh, absolutely. Talk, talk, talk to the, uh, talking to the folks and of course somebody has to be the bad guys. It's interesting trying to find somebody who's, oh, I'm going to be the bad guy, I'm going to be an SS guy. Ooh, I don't know if we can do that today. Yeah, you know, you gotta have, uh, I can understand the, the reenactment hobby is, um, I think, very valuable for people, and I can understand how it would be fun, so I don't really have any, as I'm not a reenactor, I don't really have any critiques for those who choose whatever side they choose, that's fine. So what's next for the Sophie Line channel? Um, Either Twitch or YouTube. Well, I'm here now, so I have to run home and edit this as fast as I can to be able to share it with everybody. Um, just like more events, like how can I improve the quality of my content? How can I further um, share these really cool events, these really cool experiences. How can I help people learn? Um, I've really enjoyed having the experts featured. Like I could do a bunch of homework and I could learn what to yeah. say and show the tank myself, but I think it's really nice to hear from the experts themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I've really, really enjoyed that. Yeah, and I saw your yeah, MRAP video up in, uh, up in Benny there. Yeah. With, with the guy. I, I have bad things to say. If I ever find an MRAP designer, uh, he's going to be looking to get away with his, with his life, I think. You know, JB had some harsh words as well, but he knows, like, for the channel, you know, and I'm like, no, be authentic, like, be authentic, because people, you could go read about that online, like, you want to see the stats? Go, go read about it go, online. Go to, you, go to Wiki, yeah. Yeah, but don't you want to hear a veteran speak about these in his own words? Like, right or wrong, that's his experience, and I think that's so valuable. The keeping around the voice of the veterans is something that I would like to be able to do in the future as, like, a project to be able to preserve them, because we have a lot of attention on that for, for World War II, and there's some great projects out there. One of my first fundraisers was for a group, um, World War II History Project out in California. Mm -hmm. And they go and they make sure to preserve the voices of veterans. And um, since then, I've raised like a good, probably close to 20 grand. That's not bad. Yeah, 12,000 last year for museums, restoration projects, and humanities. So it's not just like playing games and messing it, it around. It has astonished me how generous the, the various viewers that I have are oh, to, yeah. towards the charities or even myself. It uh, keeps it all like running and going. And I think that's really special. So anything that I can do that kind of promotes the people out there doing it, you know, I'm not, the, I'm not the tank expert, I'm not the veteran, but how can I, how can I uplift and support and share those who are? You know, I think every channel has a place and mm -hmm. I really enjoy the one that I found for myself. Are you going to just stick with tanks or are you going to go on to floaty things or zoomy things or... I've had a lot of encouragement for such. I have, you know, like, um, boats, uh, battleships are quite thick. <laughs> But, um, you know, it's kind of like, I, I don't want to bite off a little bit too much more than I could chew at first. So um, getting into the more modern vehicles with the MRAPs and the Bradley, and he wants to do a Humvee one, I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like, okay, how can we sort of widen the scope and how, how much more can we add? There's a bunch of other museums that aren't armored vehicle museums that yeah. could use some, some promo, some attention, some support, some fundraising, of course. But I'm a little bit limited. I, I work in uh, mental health as my full-time job, so I'm not a full-time content creator. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very busy having like three jobs, as you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As you're fully aware, 
of how that goes. So it's like, okay, bite off what you can chew. Like, let's, let's work on what we're doing while we're doing it and make it the best that we can make it. And then let's try to see what else we can branch out to because there's so much to learn. And people are, people are loving it. They want to learn more. And they, they see a video, they'll watch your video. And then another one pops up and they'll watch it. They'll binge watch your channel, you know? <laughs> people are out there and they want to learn. So how can we best connect the people at home or the people, you know, still in school with the experts? Because one of my things with history is like, um, if you had a bad history teacher, you might hate that subject forever. Yep. It's one of those things that if it's not taught to you in a way that lights the spark, there's, it's of no use to you. I had that issue with German. Yes. <laughs> and... Um, but people find through film and like modeling and things like that, you know, through the years it's been a thing, but now video games is how, you know, my generation and younger are going to get into the subject. You don't have to learn, you don't have to learn an encyclopedic amount of knowledge from these games. Your yeah. War Thunder, your World of Tanks, whatever, Call of Duty, it, it's fine. So long as it lights that spark and you can go learn for yourself, I think that's what's valuable. Do you make models? I saw you did a Kobe thing. Do you make I actual have, model I, models? I, I, have, I have never finished a model. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, in that case, you're in very good company with 98% of the modeling community. Uh, I, uh, I know you see my video of nothing but unbuilt boxes in the closet. <laughs> that seems to be a running theme. I have three now. Um, it's just a little bit of the glue and the paint. It's not quite... I'm, I'm working up to it because I'd really like to. I'm actually... I, I watch a lot of the modeling channels on Facebook because mm -hmm. I love to see people's work. They're oh, they depress me, though. You go to Plasmo no. and it's like in five minutes he's done something absolutely amazing. I'll never be that good. Oh, no, it's so inspiring how people do it. It's like I can learn from this as well. Like they share because they go and they try to make well, it happen. I, I can learn and I just become less bad. <laughs> I mean, less bad is always good, right? You can't... We can't argue that logic. Um, but it's really cool. I don't. I, I really like sort of dipping my toes into something that I can confront. Because mm -hmm. if I if I get into it, it's too difficult. I'm gonna put it down. I ain't gonna pick it back up. When I was about nine years old, we did. Uh, me and my father did a model of. It was an F14, mm -hmm. and I was like eight. Yeah. So the glue and stuff was like not. And I remember I had the specific memory. If you had to glue the joystick into the yeah. console for pilot, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, you're there with the tweezers trying to get it right. Yeah, I was like, you know, actually no. I don't even think I got the. I don't even think I got the wings on. Like I was done. <laughs> And uh, I tried one of those chibi KV2. I dropped yeah. one of the pieces on the floor and never could find it again. And now I'm gonna have- Oh yeah, the carpet monster is, oh a, is a thing. Oh my God, so now I'm gonna have a tank without like a hatch. This is like impossible. I'm one of those people like, if there's one thing wrong with it, like I'm- yeah. mm. you, you, can't, you can't scratch build a new hatch. Don't wanna do that. Resin mold off another kit maybe, I've done that. I tried it on stream before work and I ran yeah. out of time and I never picked it back up again. So now it's like, this is round three with the models. If I can get some of the Kobe ones done and like, follow through because I really actually enjoyed it. I did it with my community and so it's a lot of like talking with the chat and figuring it out and it was nice to just do something solid instead of being in front of a screen yeah, all day, yeah. you know? I think it's a really nice hobby. You can do it with, like any age, you know, wherever you're at. It's something that you can do it's your, on your own time, at your own pace. What a nice hobby. Well, that, it's amazing also what the video games have done. So you look at the catalog of kits that are available today versus what they were before World of Tanks started. And you realize that things like the T29, the T I, I had a T28 Super Heavy Tank kit by Accurate Armor. $200 it cost, it was a resin kit, but it was the only one available because nobody knew about this tank. Yeah. Until it shows up in all the tanks, and then suddenly Dragon goes, oh, we'll make a model of that, and we'll make a model of the T54E1, which they stole straight from the World of Tanks model, right. which when yep. we changed it, they had to change it. Yep. Uh, and a few other <laughs> things. Uh, so it, it's kind of interesting to cycle, it's how games and popular culture all interact with actual hobbies such as modeling or just coming yeah. out to events like this. It breathes life back into some vehicles that get forgotten about. Uh, okay, so uh, I think two more questions. One, who is your favorite tanker? So you, you know, Donald Sutherland, Brad Pitt, uh, me. <laughs> I know. I'm like, am I allowed to answer this question? Um, well, I mean, everybody probably asks you who is, what is your favorite tank, but I'm going to ask you what, who is your favorite tanker? Could be a historical one, could be a portrayal. Your call. You know. Um, this is going to be like the lamest answer hmm. and it's not like in the in the interest of being PC but um, and it, I'm not 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 speaking about films okay. but with the real people that I've met everybody teaches me something yeah everybody has an experience that I want to listen to so it's, it would be impossible to pick a favorite I'm obviously a huge fan of um, the the curator out at, at uh, Fort Benning at the National Armor Cap Collection, Rob Kogan yeah. yeah. he's always teaching mm -hmm. something from his own experience something from history um, 
there's, but, but that's just an example. Pick off the top of my head, you know, obviously yourself, you're out there teaching people every day. You can't walk two feet at an event like this without somebody coming up and saying, hey, I love this video. I learned so much from your channel. Thank you, da da da. Can I get a selfie? You know, you can't walk two feet. You're, start, you're starting to feel my pain then. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a good pain. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's always great to feel um, like that you've made a, a good difference, you know, and so there's, there's people like that out there, and then there's people like that who just served. They served, they, they did their yeah. job, and now they're living their lives. And I respect them just as much. You know, I, I couldn't say I have a favorite. Everybody has something. Everybody has a value. I mean, to be to be clear, I just want to say it's my pain. It it is good to feel appreciated. Just it's so fun. Once in a mile, I've got to get from A to B, and it takes me 45 minutes to get from one end of Bobbington to the other end of Bobbington for a meeting. Just like how how fun it is to put the real tanks to the game tanks or to the models, mm -hmm. it's just as fun to put faces to the names online. It, it is. It, it is. Uh, and, and they're kind of going, okay. Yeah. I was so pleased with myself that I remember some guy said he was going to bring a cook V today. And I ran into him in the parking lot and he says, Kyle, yes, yes, I got it right. <laughs> no, it's so right. fun. So then uh, I guess last question for the three people who watch this, who don't already watch you. What do you want to put out to the world of the chieftain? I don't know, you're in the right place. If you want to learn about uh, tanks and other armored vehicles of history, you're already in the right place. So what advice do I have for you? You've already figured it out. <laughs> You know, um, I don't know. I don't. I like to listen instead of talk. So, can I ask you a question? Okay. What is your favorite thing about content creation? Content creation. Well, what I liked about going going my own way a little bit aside from World of Tanks is the the creativity to do something I want covered. Hmm. So, World of Tanks obviously covers World War II, mid war sort of thing. But I like the opportunity to do modern stuff, like when I went to Sweden and uh, Stefan let me crawl around the SCRV 104. Yeah. Or drive the S tank with a turbine engine, which yeah. I haven't driven a turbine engine tank in years. And uh, so, do, doing the creation on my own side allows me the opportunity to get off and simply enjoy myself, as well as provide a useful uh, function for tank enthusiasts, I'd like to Absolutely. think. Absolutely. I made a mistake with my college degree. I went and I did something stupid. I went and got a degree I thought would be useful. So for my master's, I'm doing something which I'm going to enjoy. It may or may not be useful, we'll find out. <laughs> what do you think you would tell yourself um, if you could go back in time and see you starting out on the content creation journey? Because I know you have a lot of people that watch you who also do a little bit YouTube themselves, so they would like to. What, what's the advice that you give yourself just starting out on your own channel with your own content? Hold tight, it's going to be a hell of a ride. Um, get a better computer. Uh, yeah. We were talking about this offline. It's kind of, but when I hit render, it will be 2 a.m. in the morning before it's over, and the wife's yelling at me for not being in bed. And uh, it's kind of so. Uh, put. And then you watch it. There's an error, and you have to do it again. <laughs> you put put the money into the uh, into the equipment, into the back, into the resources. It's all very well saying, yeah, I want the money to go places and film things, but you got to have you got to have the equipment in the background to make it all so much easier. I think I think that's my word of advice to, to a younger me. Yeah. That and learn video editing software. You just gotta bite the bullet, get yourself with some tutorials. Yep, that's the size of it. Just make, just make content. And cram out the time to actually do it. Yeah. So a lot of scheduling. Consistency is, is quality. Okay, so this was Sophie Line. I'm, I'll put a link to the channel down below, but believe me, she's not hard to find online. Uh, and again, coming to some place with tanks near you. I'll hear them. Thank you for the chat. <laughs>